Hello everybody, it's Dragana from Sasebo. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. I also want to welcome you to my creative space. It's a really tiny, tiny space and there's quite a lot happening in there. So I did struggle in the past of how to fit everything in. And I needed to fit not just my paper crafts, filming area, also had to fit in all the sewing tools and fabrics because I do produce things for my Etsy shop like bags and, and pouches and things like that. When you enter the room to my right side I store everything related to my paper crafts and on top shelves I have things that are in my Etsy shop. And what you're seeing now is my filming area. I film my tutorials there. In the glass container I keep some lace flowers. This is a box with just some projects on the go and you can see there all the paints and this area that's in front of the window is where I like to paint and do all the messy bits like jelly printing and things like that. So this is my favorite area to work in during the day in front of the window and this is the view through my window. Yeah, just trees. I love it. It's beautiful greenery. And it's really peaceful. The house is um, on a hill and the window of my studio is actually facing the hill. The other side of the house has gorgeous views but it tends to be really hot during summer with all the sun. That's directly in the windows. This is my box where I have my ideas and stuff that I'm working on. I keep my acrylics here, my brushes, watercolor brushes and acrylic brushes. I have some metallic paints in this tub here, some distress pastes, I keep my sponges and dovers there. So on the shelves up here I have um, bits and pieces that I use in my journals. The top two shelves you can see are the stuff that's in my Etsy shop and the lower one is all my journal related supplies. The very top and there it's where the boxes are. I use those boxes to store goods that I send to my customers. So here you're probably interested in this box. I have my journals there, some that I kept for myself. Then I have all the ephemera that we've created together in tutorials. I have it in there and I just grab that box and I pick what I want for my journals. And here we have some beads and charms, other metal bits that are needed to make journals. Now down the bottom I have journals that I'm working on at the moment. My journals or journals that I make for my store. That's my bendy arm. I use that to hold my phone, I record all the videos with my phone, I find it uh, it's the easiest way for me. Here I store all the ephemera bits that I created and in those little uh, tubs like tags and specimens, some little envelopes, labels, more specimens that were laminated and ready to be used and in this rack we have also journal bits and pieces. Here you can see I store all my glues. Now here I created these boxes just with some reused packaging and with contact paper and added these black labels. So I have my paper flowers, collage strips, snippets and clusters, tags, uh, belly bands, tags, pockets and also ruffles. And over here I keep all the papers like the scraps, uh, maps, magazine pages that I find interesting, music sheets, um, also digital papers, printables and some other things that I use in my journals. Now all my current projects I store in boxes like this, like separate. So 
that when I want to work on them, I just grab that box and everything is in there. So I have, you can see several projects that I've started here. And the bits that I want to put in a specific journal, I put in these plastic uh, folders. Here's the one we've done recently, accordion style one. Yeah, so it's all in boxes like that. It just keeps things separate and easy for me to grab and just work. In this metal tub, I keep papers that I want to coffee or tea dye. So once it gets full and I have some time, I just do the coffee or tea dyeing in that rusty tin. And this is an album that I was given, an empty blank album. Very heavy and very good quality, but I use it to flatten my papers. And the, this is actually a flower press that my husband built for me, and I love it. I will show you perhaps in one of the videos just that, but for now that's what it looks like. And this is what I come up when it comes to the papers that I created myself. This is my storage solution for the special papers. Um, I bought these clear plastic um, like folios really they were really affordable and I decided to put all my special papers in them and I put little labels let's have a look at one let's have a look at the collage masterboards so I just slide it out lay it flat down and then open it up and it can fit quite a lot and everything is stored securely they're larger than A4 so they can fit even bigger papers depending on what I'm working on and everything is in there so that's really great way and easy for me to find them if I'm looking for something specific when I'm uh, making a journey Uh, this is my solution for storing my 12 by 12 papers, uh, other scrapbooking papers. It's an IKEA magazine shelf that I have for like ages. And I just put them in there so that I can see them and get to them easily. Now here on this shelf, I store everything in clear plastic boxes so that I can see what's in each one and reach for it. So here are washi tapes. And I just want to show you how I store my pressed flowers. You're probably wondering how to store them properly. They are a bit fragile. Okay, so I use just recycled cellophane bags that I get when I'm buying stencils and stamps and just uh, brown paper bags. I usually fold them in half so they're a bit thicker. I have like two papers. And then I store all the pressed flowers. I try to organize them either by size or if I have a lot of the same, I'll just put that one in and so on. And they're ready to go when I need them. I just grab whatever I want and I don't have to rummage through the whole and destroy other bits. They are really fragile. Over here, I want to show you this album. I've been collecting bits and pieces of papers that I created and putting those little squares into this album. I think I've seen this first. Gail Agostinelli had something like that and that's what inspired me to actually start an album of papers that I created by myself. And I really love it. Here you can see my eco prints some wax papers, uh, jelly prints, more papers. It's a nice way to remind yourself um, things that you've created, especially if you lose motivation. Here I'm showing the top two shelves, which have all the things that are in my Etsy shop, like bags, pouches, uh, little bits and pieces, and also my inspirational journal making kits. Now this part of the workbench is just for cutting and this is my solution to storing stencils, stamps and dies. So you can see I have some of the dies attached to a magnetic board 
sorry the bendy arm is in my way and these are the the little ones are the ones that I use most often I also turn this calendar into a little like a um, flip out book that stores some of my die cuts but the, the majority of dies are stored in one of these folders that I actually upcycled from my business that I wasn't using anymore and they are actually great for storing these things. They're really heavy duty, they can fit a lot and this is my solution for storing dies. I recycled some uh, chipboard, I placed magnetic sheets over on both sides, added eyelets to make uh, where the holes are to make it more durable and I put uh, pieces of cardstock in between uh, to separate these areas. So if I want to work on these, I can take them out, work on them and then put them back in. And so far, this turned out to be the, the best way for me to store them. In my last video, I think I've shown you how I store my stamps and nothing's changed apart from the folder. I had an old folder and now I put in this one. I just have, in case you haven't seen it, in one plastic sleeve there's two pieces of thick acetate, one on top, one on which I put the stamps and there's a piece of white cardstock. So if you wish you can stamp on the white cardstock to see those stamps better. So the stencils I store in this one as well. and. I used again plastic sleeves and black paper and each sleeve can fit stencils on two sides and they are separated with just black paper. I find that it's easiest to see them on the black paper since most of them are white anyway. Go. I love using stencils so there is also room to grow in this folder, plenty room to add more because I'm addicted to buying them. <laughs> if I see one that I don't have it that I like, I just have to have it. And yeah, I also make my own sometimes with die cuts and the plastics. Now here you can see in this box I keep all my punches. I don't have that many. But the ones that I have, I use a lot. In the glass jars here, you can see dried flower petals that I use in my fall handmade botanical papers. And I have a plant that I got from my husband. Orchid. I hope this one survives. You can't see the flowers right up underneath that curtain. So this is my main sewing area. I replaced my old uh, sewing machine that I love using with this one because this one takes very little room and the other one was taking up the whole space that I use as my wet area now. That's, it's a big one. It takes a lot of uh, room and I didn't have that luxury. So this is my threads and my scissors and bits and pieces. I have some tools here in these plastic drawers. And then uh, in the jar there's some yo-yo flowers, some ruffles and all my laces are in these yellow boxes wrapped uh, on those tags that I cut out using my die cut machine and I cut them out from just uh, cardboard boxes, the ones that I get when I order online. And all the ribbons are stored on that pipe and here is a little something that I made. A while ago and I really love it. I have it there just to remind myself that I can do it. <laughs> Here you can see the buttons and underneath is my packaging station. I keep all the envelopes and bits and pieces that I need when I'm packaging up orders to go. And also on that area there that you see, I don't only cut fabrics there, I also use it to pack up orders can see some inspirational journal making kits here. I will do a video on these probably sometime. 
yeah, here's the one. I think this is perfect as a Halloween cake, I think. I've never made a Halloween theme uh, journal, but I think I want to. I keep all my fabric scraps here in this box. There's the iron and in this cute little wooden box I keep needles for my sewing machine. There's a box with bobbins and a jar with some strings and my cropper dial and other bits and pieces that I need for my sewing machine. Next to it uh, you can see my Sizzix die cut which is the my number one tool right next to the sewing machine. I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing without those two I think. And here I'm showing you my uh, workbenches. They're just wood that I covered with these plastic tablecloths to make uh, them easy to clean. Now here you can see in those plastic bags I have some laces and uh, crochet doilies. I keep them there. Then on the top shelves I have fabrics. I have loads of fabrics and what you see here is only about 10% of what I have because I have been uh, doing a lot of sewing a couple of years ago before I was so into junk journaling and um, I'm left with all these fabrics but they're going to be in my inspirational packs now in these boxes these are just cardboard boxes that I put some fabrics around I have zippers I have some threads and ropes here then in this one again I have some bits and pieces now here I keep some of the cute little doilies some embroidery threads and here is just some of my eco prints are peeking through oh yeah there's just some bits and pieces of fabrics that I use when I make snippet rolls and it's more of the same in those other boxes that shelf has I don't even know what stuff now as you can see even the door is used to store things. Here are some recent uh, additions to my fabric collection and I haven't used these. I can't wait to use them. They look gorgeous. Underneath the benches I keep envelopes and cardstocks and magazines and bits and pieces that I can recycle and use as my journals. I have all the books that are damaged in some way that I use them in uh, my journals or collages. And then uh, this typewriter that a friend of ours let me use it. Now here is where I keep all my inks and you know other things that I use when I'm doing paintings. And then here I have some sample books or some fabric swatches and I love these books. I was uh, given quite a lot over the years and I just love them. Let's have a look at one just to show you what they look like. Isn't it beautiful? So well made. Now I want to show you this stool that's actually used not just for me to sit on it but also to step on it because obviously I need sometimes to reach things from the top shelves and this serves that purpose and it doesn't take that much room. And I also made myself a cushion so it's a little bit more comfortable. <laughs> so I think I covered everything, hopefully I haven't forgotten anything that's important if I have and you've seen something that I didn't explain what it was, please let me know in the comments below so i hope you enjoyed and um, i hope you get some ideas on how to organize your creative space mine is not perfect it's actually really tiny and it's really really full with stuff that i actually need when i'm creating and for me the most important thing for my studio is that everything is within my reach so thank you so much for watching and uh, i'm going to go and work on this journal because i'm really inspired to and i hope i see you again in my next video bye for now mm -hmm.